Hello, and welcome to Forces in Biomechanics, a forces review. There will be many different forces involved in the study of biomechanics. As our muscles pull on our bones, as we lift ourselves or things around us, and even internally as our organs and tissues interact with one another. What you may remember about forces is that they are vectors that have magnitude and direction. Their units are in newtons, and we can break them down into components that belong to a coordinate system. In this case, let's consider E1, E2, and E3. If this coordinate system changes, the components will change as well. A common shortcut we use to write vectors in terms of their components uses the summation convention. This convention takes the summation as i goes from 1 to 3 of fi ei, but the way you will often see it written is leaving behind the summation symbol and only writing down the fi ei because it is assumed that the consecutive i's are implying summation. What you may already remember is how to find the magnitude of the force. It simply involves adding the squares of the components, then taking the square root. You can also write that using the summation convention. That would just be the square root of fi fi with the consecutive i's implying summation. You will also be often adding forces throughout your exercises. What I recommend that you do is add the components of the forces you are adding. In this quick example, all you need to do is add p1 plus q1 to get final component r1 for vector r, and so on for the components r2 and r3. You will have two main groups of forces acting on a rigid body. These are the internal forces and the external forces. The internal forces will always balance each other out for as long as no external forces are acting on the body. External forces, on the other hand, are forces applied onto the body because of other bodies or fields around. Two common examples of external forces are weight and friction. A final concept that I want to leave you with is the principle of transmissibility. The overarching idea is that forces will have different effects depending on the deformability of the body. Picture a rigid body and a deformable body. You can apply a force on a rigid body at one point or at another point along the same line of action. It doesn't matter. The body will move the same way. If you apply the same forces at the same points, now on a deformable body, the body will act differently and deform differently depending on where the force was applied. The reason being is that on a rigid body, as long as the force is being applied along the same line of action, the effect will be the same. This is not the case with a deformable body. Picture a deformable parallelopiped. If you apply two forces on the outsides, then the same forces along the same line of action, but one being closer to the other force, you will get different deformabilities from the two experiments. One will be mushed almost as a whole, while the other may just deform as a little pinch. Okay, this is a brief review of forces that you should keep in mind when working with biomechanics. I will see you next time. Thank you.